We are up to 47 participants and still getting more joining. So we'll give it a couple more minutes and then we're gonna get started talking about matrix. Hey, Michael. Morning. Where's the microphone, Nicole? To the left where it says mute down at the bottom? Yes. Yeah, there should be an arrow next to the mute. Oh, the arrow. Okay. And then click where? Um, I went into audio settings. Oh, okay. Here we go. Because the earpods on, it's loud. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Good morning, Michael and Orlando. Morning. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I love that that picture of you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> hey, Michael. Good morning. Are your girls coloring? Um, <laughs> I gave, I put out uh, applesauce, goldfish, pirate's booty, and fruit snacks. <laughs> so I'm hoping to get by for, you know, three minutes. Uh, so <laughs> we'll see how that goes. We've still got people joining. I'm answering questions in chat. Um, let's see. Where does my, where do I go to add that? Welcome everybody. It's about 11.05. I think I'm going to give it just one more minute. We've got almost 60 people on. So I am going to make sure everybody's muted. You're welcome to unmute yourself if you want to ask a question or you can use the chat button down at the bottom on your Zoom toolbar. But just for ease of use, I'm going to make sure everybody's muted to start with. All right, are y'all ready to get started? I will take that as a yes. Since y'all are all on mute, I'm gonna assume you said yes. <laughs> there, I got some yes in chat, so that works. Um, good morning, thanks for joining us. My name is Nicole Boynton. I'm TNT's Director of Education. And um, I'd like to thank Michael Pecon for letting us use his meeting today. We were scheduled to teach for his group and they are letting us open it up to all of y'all. So we are so glad that y'all are here. Thanks, Michael, we got double thumbs up. Um, and we're grateful that y'all are joining us. Um, Classic Realty of Texas. So thanks, Michael, for that. Today, we are going to talk about Matrix Mastery. And this is a fun class because what it allows us to do is show you lots of tips and tricks for Matrix, where you get into Matrix and you're familiar with just running in and you know maybe doing some searches and doing some ad edit for your listings, but you don't realize there may be a faster, or easier, or um, you know, better route for you to do stuff. So we're going to talk about some of the ways that you can go through and learn some tips and tricks for Matrix to help hopefully make your life easier, or maybe just some features in Matrix you didn't know about. 
All right, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen so that you can see the slides. And when we do that, when I do that, you'll be able to also see um, that we're going to go through some information about using Zoom. All right, so can y'all see my screen okay? Excellent. So you will see here in the um, on the first page that I have a link to these slides and let me go ahead and put that in chat real quick. If you want to download the slides later today and make sure I send this to everybody https or you can just skip that part and do bit.ly forward slash tnt matrix and it is case sensitive so you'll do bit.ly forward slash tnt matrix and that will take you to the full presentation that we're going to go through bit.ly and i'm going to put it in here twice all right, so y'all are welcome to download those slides at any point or later today. All right, so again, welcome. Um, we are happy to have you here. We are um, going to show you all the cool tips and tricks with Matrix, and you're going to leave here so much smarter. Before we get started, let me just give you a quick rundown of the Zoom toolbar. If you don't see it right away, you might hover your mouse in the top or the bottom of your screen in order to be able to see the Zoom controls. What you can see here on the slide is that there's a microphone in the far left-hand corner that will allow you to mute and unmute yourself. And if you click on that arrow, it'll also give you some additional um, components for you to change volume and things if it's too loud or it's too soft. And then right next to that, you have a video camera. You can click on that to turn video on or off. And then if you kind of scroll further down on that toolbar, you may have a chat button. If you don't see the chat button, you may have to click on more to get to it. But when you see chat, that gives you the ability to send questions to everybody, to me. Um, Larry just asked, can I record this on my own Zoom? I think you have to be the host. I think the way that we have the settings set, you have to be the host in order to record it. But we are recording, Larry. So if you would like a copy of that, we're happy to send that out to you afterwards. All right. So again, feel free to unmute yourself if you want to ask a question. Otherwise, you can put it in the chat and we will um, grab that as soon as we can and we're going to get started. I'm going to minimize this just slightly because we're going to be going back and forth today between the presentation and matrix. So let me know if at any point the sharing stops working or again if you all have questions. All right, let's get going. Woo! That was like wheel of fortune right there. I just went speeding through the class. All right, here's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about quick tips things that you can do right away, implement with your matrix that's going to make things easier for you that you just may not have know, known existed with matrix. Custom display, how you can build your own search within matrix so that you are not um, having to use whatever filters and um, parameters are set in place for you whenever you do a normal search. You have columns and results that come up in a specific way. Well, you have control over changing how that looks. So we'll talk about that. Speed bar searching, which as the name implies, is the fastest way to search. And stats, which to me are um, one of my favorite features truly in Matrix because it really allows you to be an expert in any neighborhood or MLS areas, um, any zip code that you choose and run statistics about a specific area. All right, let's get going. I am just gonna keep spinning until I find the right slide. All right, quick tips. We are going to talk about when you when you run a search, all the different things that you can do with that result screen once you've run a search. OK, some of these may be new. Some maybe you didn't know. So that would make them new also, wouldn't it? All right. I am in Matrix. Let me make this a little bit bigger. And I am going to go in and do a search. And I'm going to do just a quick residential search. I'm going to do MLS area RRW 
RRE, and I'll just point out a couple things that they're not going to be in your packet as we go through this, but you'll notice if you're doing multiple areas, you'll put a comma between those. You also can use your um, command on a Mac, it's command, it's control on a PC and select more than one. But if you're going to type them in, you're going to put a comma between them. Okay, so if I do Round Rock East, Round Rock West, and I can do active, active contingent, let's say I do solds, if I want to go back zero to 180, that means I'm going back six months, right? I'm going from zero days to 180 days. And the thing that you have to remember about matrix is matrix is an exact match search. Okay, what I mean by that is that whatever you put into matrix is what matrix seeks to return to you. So if you put in 180 without zero to 180, that means that it's going to only run 180 days, things that were sold 180 days ago versus zero to 180, it's gonna give us anything sold within that time frame. How do you make the search fields go from left to right instead of up and down? Uh, I think, are you asking like on additional fields chat? How do we make them go left to right instead of up and down? I don't know that you have the ability to change the search fields themselves and where those are laid out. It's not so much the search fields. <clears throat> I'm looking at your format, uh -huh. uh, just how it takes up the whole screen. Uh -huh. And typically whenever I do a search, everything that, for example, your status, your sub properties and so forth uh -huh. is just straight up and down. Uh, yeah. And I like how it's spread out. I just, I what didn't know if you did. Are, what device are you typically using? Uh, it's my laptop. Okay. Um, and you have it set at a full screen? You know, I'm wondering if I do, because I'm seeing your format slightly different. I've, I've got all the searches like you have. Right. But, but they're just straight one. up and down. Yes. Try doing, um, you're on a PC, not a Mac? Correct. Okay. Try doing control and the plus sign and that will actually expand your screen. It's basically a zoom feature. So command okay. um, or control plus or control minus will make it bigger or smaller. So if you okay. do control plus, maybe that will make your screen bigger. I'll give it a shot. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. So uh, matrix advanced uh, matrix is exact match search. So if I were to do bedrooms in this case, if I do two bedrooms, that's going to return only two bedroom houses that were active or active contingent or sold in the last 180 days versus if I did two dash four, that's going to give me two to four, right? It's not going to give me fives. So exact match search, you have to be cautious that what you're putting in the search is exactly what you get out. So let me tell you, let me point out one other quick thing before we get into the search results and I show you um, the information about um, how to change your search and modify your search. But um, when you go into subdivision and you can see some that I already have in here in my previous search history, when you go into subdivision because it's an exact match search, if you put in a subdivision name, it's going to look to return that exact name. So with subdivision, you need to include a wild card. The wild card is the asterisk, so it's shift and the number eight. So you see here that for subdivision, how I have it searched block, if I was looking for Blockhouse Creek and I didn't know if Blockhouse was one word or two words, I can put block in asterisk, so an asterisk before and an asterisk after, what that means is I'm telling Matrix I want any subdivision that includes the word block, okay? The asterisk, which is also called the wild card, takes the place of missing information. So that means there may be words after block house, there may be spaces after, I'm sorry, after block, there may be words before block. So by putting block in asterisks, I'm saying I could get block house, I could get preserve at block house, I could get reserve at block house creek. Any subdivision that includes the word block is going to be included in my result. Worst case scenario, we end up with extra results that we weren't expecting. And in that case, we would want to make sure that we were using zip code or schools, something to help further limit our search results because block could be included in something in Buda when really the one I'm looking for is Cedar Park. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. 
All right, so we are gonna do, um, right now I'm running subdivision like block, 65 matches, we're gonna hit results. And let me mention this to y'all, um, and a lot of this again you may know, but just in case you don't, additional fields when you go into add or remove, you do have the ability to include any other fields that are available to you under add edit, there are a lot of things you can fill out when you enter a listing that are not necessarily a search field that is readily available in this, especially the quick search, right? And a residential quick, when I go to residential quick. If there is something else you wanna be able to search, pool on property, um, elementary schools, right? Things that I have here, you can go into add and remove fields and add additional search fields. So we could type in, something like view and add that as another search field. I already have it, it's not gonna let me add it again, but let's say waterfront, that's gonna add it. That one's already there too. What will happen is those search options will be down here at the very bottom of your screen. They will stay there unless you remove them, but they will always, those additional fields will always be at the bottom. Those will not go over to the right. Okay. So we're gonna go into results. And I have 65 results. So let's talk about all the things we could do with these search results. When we get to this screen, and if I were to have, I'm gonna change this. Let's say I have two pages of results. What you'll notice is I have 65 results and I'm only showing 50 results per page. So that means I have two pages of results. In order to, let me move my, my uh, chat screen. In order to select all properties, we often get in the habit of going right here, right to this box, and we're gonna select everything. The problem is, if you notice, I've only selected 50 of the 65 total listings. What I want you to get in the habit of, if you're not already doing this, is that I want you to select all right here at the top of the page select all instead of selecting right here because if you have multiple pages of results and you select with this button you're only selecting the first page of results okay be sure you do select all otherwise you're just selecting the page all right you can also sort by clicking on any of the column headers okay if i wanted to sort because i had people that were um, most interested in four bedrooms. So I think we did a search. Did I do a search? Let's see. If you forget what you searched, like me, and it's been three seconds, so I forgot what I've searched, it will list your search criteria down here at the bottom of your results screen. I did not put a number of bedrooms, but let's say my buyers want a four bedroom. They're, they'll look at three, maybe with a study, but they'd rather have four. I can click right here on beds. When I put my cursor on the column header, you can see that it gives me this like hand, looks like a Mickey Mouse glove almost. That will let me click on the column header and it's gonna sort. The first sort is gonna be A to Z, and in this case, smallest to biggest. So it's gonna give me the two bedroom, three bedroom at the top. If I click it again, it's gonna reverse the sort. If I want all the five, four and five and six bedrooms to come to the top, I'm gonna click that one more time. Now my five bedroom, then my four bedroom. That way I can start the search for my um, clients by looking at the four bedrooms first. Okay, does that make sense? I can search and actually sort multiple columns. So I could do beds. And then if I wanted to also do then year built, let's say I'm gonna do year built, click on that twice again, because I wanna have the newest come to the top. And so when I click on that a second time, matrix is gonna think about it. Now the 2019, it comes to the top, okay? So I've got a four bedroom, 2019 is my top search. Once I make the changes to my sorting, if I always want it to be sorted that way, I always wanna sort by square footage or then I always wanna sort by beds, and I'm gonna go resort this again because beds was my bigger priority than my square footage. Click twice. Now I've broken matrix, tends to happen. It's 
thinking. Once you've sorted and you have everything set the way that you want it, you can make that your default permanently. If you click over here on the right side, you've got single line, how many are displayed, there's a little settings wheel. If you click on that settings wheel, you can say set current display as my starting search default. That means any changes that you've made in sorting or columns, things like that, will always be the way that your search defaults to. So it will, it will always search beds with the biggest amount of beds being at the top, okay? If you don't want that to change, you wanna leave the system default, then leave it be, or you can reset if you accidentally have changed something, okay? But this little settings wheel, and then going to set current display will allow you to keep all those changes that you've made with any search in the future, okay? Let me show you a couple of other things. These search windows are very much like Excel in the sense that we can come in here and if I put my mouse, this is probably very hard to see, but there's a little T-bar, a crossbow between your built-in acres. And if I want to drag this, I can make my columns bigger or smaller, okay? So I just have to put that between my columns, get the little crossbow and drag it. And I can change the size of my columns, okay? Just like you can do with Excel, you can make your columns wider or more narrow. Um, you can also double click. Everything is being very slow because I'm trying to show y'all. And then you also have under display here at the top, you have single line, which is again the default. But if you prefer the agent one page to be your default, you can change your display and click to make agent one page the default. One page with photos, regular agent one page, um, sold, right? Any of these reports, you could make those your default rather than single line view, which is the list. If you prefer to go straight to the agent one page, no worries, you can set that. And again, then go into the settings wheel and make that your default, okay? Did y'all know all of that? All right, let's flip back over to this, make sure that we have covered everything. Um, select all, default view, change column sorting, place the cursor to adjust the column width. Oh, drag and drop columns, we did not do that. Let's do this. Oh, and recent searches, we'll talk about that. Okay, drag and drop. If you put your mouse over to the kind of the side in the header, right, in the little, is it gray, taupe? I don't know what the, what the color is, but if you put your mouse kind of to the right of the column name, I get a, a, a crossbow, it's got four arrows on it. That means I can grab this column and drag and drop it to another location. Okay, so I could put, if square footage is generally more important or days on market's more important, I can grab that and drag and drop it over to another spot in my results. And then once again, if I always wanna make cumulative days on market stay in that spot, then I wanna make sure that I save that as my default display, okay? All right, and y'all don't forget, if you have questions, please feel free to unmute yourself or use the chat feature. And then last on this, I'm gonna tell you about recent searches. Trying to copy the only MLS number of the properties I've searched, copy them for my notes of the properties. Let me see. Trying to copy only the MLS numbers of the properties. Oh, so Chet, are you trying to just copy this column the, of the MLS numbers? What I did is I set up a screen like this, except it only has the MLS numbers, but whenever mm -hmm. I try to copy it, mm -hmm. it, it still doesn't have a nice clean format for me to put it in my notes of properties that I've emailed that client. Okay. That's what I'm trying to do. And I didn't know if you had a pearl of wisdom that you could share with us that, uh, I, you know, for example, again, all right, who did I send, you know, what information did I send Stacy? 
uh -huh. boom, I could go ahead and for that note, I could just copy those three, five, ten uh, MLS numbers and put it okay. in her notes and, and move on. Okay. And when you copy them, what notes, like what, what filing system, like are you truly using um, like a text? What are you putting them in Microsoft Word? You know, I put them in Excel. I put them in uh, Lion Desk. I put them in okay. different things. And, but whenever you copy them, just going through, you know, off of Matrix, just, you know, highlighting and copy. Right. Uh, it, it doesn't like that format. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, if you were going to put it in Excel, I would do a paste special and I would do paste special text. Hmm. And that way it's going to do just the numbers. It's not going to have the links and it might keep it in a better format. You can do um, paste special text or you can also do um, paste special. It might be HTML is probably not going to be what you want. Um, but the other option would be to put it in like a, um, a text editing software like Word and yeah. remove all of the formatting yeah. and then paste it somewhere else. That gets to be sort of onerous, but you could yeah. also just export it rather than copying. You could click this and then have you ever done the actual export button? That actually, I did do that. I was hoping there's something that I didn't have to export because I'm not right. as familiar. Yeah. Uh, I was wanting to see if you had a little tip for me besides okay. doing the export because the export actually did work pretty well. Yeah, it does. It's, it takes a little bit more time. I do personally always copy and paste anyway, but let me um, make myself a note and see if there's any other better way if you copied and pasted it to another program that might help. Okay. All right, so let's talk about recent searches. Over here in the top right hand corner under where your name is, is a box <coughs> of recent searches. And recent searches is exactly what the name says. It's going to show you your most recent searches. Here is the big caveat that I need you to understand about recent searches. If you use recent searches, it is a snapshot in time. Okay, do you see how it's got a time and a date associated with it? If I were to go to this search that I ran Friday at 1118, it had five results. The issue is that this search that I ran on Friday with five results, when I go and click on it, I mean, these are not good examples because these are from Hotsheet. If I go and run a search that I ran on Friday, recent search is not going to be updated with the newest information. Okay, so right here, this property was active on Friday when I ran my search. You can see even at the top, it says search run Friday at 314. If that property today on Tuesday is under contract and shows as pending taking backup or it has had a price reduction or it's temporarily off the market, that is not going to show in my search result, okay? Because I am going back to the search as it looked on Friday at 314, not as it looks today on Tuesday at 1130. Recent searches are a snapshot. It's going to only show you what you saw originally at the time of that search. So if you had something that you ran and there was a property for a customer that you had seen and you thought, oh, now I can't find it, recent search is a great way to get back to and go find something, but just know using it to go pull up a search and expecting the latest results isn't the way that it works, okay? Recent search is a snapshot. Really important to know that because I find that not everybody is aware of that. All right, I got a question. Didn't know that. Good. See, my work here is done. You learned one thing, we're done. Y'all can take the rest of the day off. Just kidding. <laughs> All right. Then let's flip back over to our slides. Okay, so recent searches, we are good with that. And then column, custom display. This is a super cool feature. In the snapshot, if you check the MLS number, will it take you to the current info? Um, in the um, recent searches, if you were to do an MLS number, it is still not, in this case, I had a recent search that was an MLS number. It will still only give me the information from when I originally ran the search. It is not updated. So if you're gonna want the most updated stuff, just go run a fresh search. Don't use recent searches. Now, if you were to put the MLS number here in quick, in the quick speed bar, which we're going to talk about in a minute, that will give you the most up-to-date info. 
All right, custom display. Y'all, this is a super cool feature. Have I said super cool about 15 times? It's super cool that it's super cool. <laughs> let me show you what a, um, let me go back to residential quick and let me show you what a custom display looks like. All right, let me run. Run a quick search on some actives in Georgetown, just so I have some search results. When you go in and you perform a search, you get the screen the way that it was designed by somebody at CoreLogix that is a developer that probably never sold real estate a day in their life. And that's fine, but there may be some efficiencies that can be gained by changing the way that this is laid out. Okay, maybe you don't use any of the icons that are out here on the far right. Maybe there are other columns that you are interested in seeing that you don't see. Maybe you want to have a column for pool or for the neighborhood name. That can all be accomplished through a custom display. Let me show you. Um, I just broke it. I'm trying too hard. Oh, good. Da, 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 da. Feel free to talk amongst yourselves. Now, this is a case where recent search. It's okay to use because I'm just going back to something I ran two seconds ago. In the display, once we create your custom display, any custom display you've created is listed under my. Okay, so what I'm going to show you is here is doo -doo -doo -doo, a custom display with the subdivision. What you'll see when Matrix stops thinking is that it is going to shift to a view with only the columns that I have chosen in my report. And I think I totally messed matrix up. It's, it's in the spinning wheel of death. So what we might do is go back in. I may have to close matrix. I totally broke it, y'all. Like sometimes I break the internet. This time I just broke matrix. So that's pretty good. Either that or my kids are on the Xbox and the PS and taking up all the bandwidth in the house, which is making none of my stuff work. All right, I'm going to go back to recent searches. Actually, we'll just do this real quick. And I haven't shown you this, but we're going to talk about speed bar here in a second. All right, so here are actives in RRW. Zoom slows everything down. Totally agree, Larry, you are right. All right, here is an example of, let me go to my subdivision and see if we can't get this to display properly. All right, so there it goes. Now, do you see how this display, this view is different than the previous one? The one that you get as the standard, as the default, doesn't include subdivision, right? It doesn't have the, the version that you get as your default has all of those icons out to the right. This doesn't have all of the columns that you have on your default, but it has the columns that are most important to me, which is subdivision and address. And I'll show you why there's two addresses, MLS number and why I'll show you why there's two of those. But this gives me data that I am more interested in seeing all the time. So let me show you how to create this. Okay. Up at the top of your screen, when you want to create a custom display, I would encourage you to go right here to the pencil and the pad and click manage display. Now we can go in and we can go to my matrix and create a custom display from there, but I want you to go this route because it's a little bit faster. We're going to click on the paper and the pencil and we are going to, I'm sorry, let me back up one step because I want to do this from the standard report, not from a custom display. I want to create a custom display from the regular single line. Okay, we're going to go right here to the pad and the pencil. We're going to click save as a copy. What we're doing is essentially like when you go file, save as, that's what we're doing right now with this layout. So we're doing, we're clicked on the paper and the pencil. I'm going to do save as a copy. And now I have a copy of my single line created. 
what we've done is we created an extra copy of this layout, okay? Now we can go into My Matrix Settings, and all the good stuff is under My Matrix Settings. Once we get there, we're gonna go to Custom Display. Now I have a whole bunch because y'all are just doing this for the first time, you likely won't have a whole bunch unless you have made a custom display. Now, because I did the search that I'd run was a residential search, that means then when I did the save as a copy, I saved my display was a residential search, okay? Right now, it's looking at cross property. I need to change it to go into the residential displays because again, I ran a residential search. I did save this search as a copy. Now I need to look at that under the residential displays. All right, so I had single line copy. That was what the name of my report was. When I go into edit that report, you'll see over on the right, these are all the columns that already exist in our regular standard report. If I didn't do save as copy and I just came into custom display and started creating, I would not have any columns to start with. It would be a blank report and I would have to build it from scratch. What I would rather do is go in and just delete the stuff that I don't care about. Um, so there may be things like, do, 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 do. oh, hang on. This is the wrong report, single line. I think it's going to be this one. I've done this too many times. I have too many reports. Okay. If there are things in here that I'm not interested in, I can get rid of them. If I don't want the RPR icon that was at the end or all of those things before virtual tour, I can get rid of those icons. Um, if I don't want anything else, anything that's listed in here, if I click remove, it's going to take it out of that view, the single line view. And I can also rename this whole custom 2020. Then in, in addition to being able to remove columns I don't want, I'm gonna add columns I do want, okay? So if I wanna know um, subdivision, if I wanna have a column for pool, this is a list of all of the available fields in matrix, a lot. And rather than scrolling through that, let's say I wanna find pool, I'm gonna type in pool to the search, and then I'm gonna do pool on property, and I'm gonna add that. Now what you'll see is based on where my cursor was over here on the right, that's where my new field gets entered, where my new column gets put. If I want pool on property to be further to the left, I'm gonna move it up. So I'm just clicking up. I have pool on property highlighted and I'm clicking up to move it further up in my columns, which means in my list when I'm looking at it on the view, it's further to the left. All right, I had a question. You can change the name from total bedrooms. Yes, you can do the name change. That's right, Chad, that's a great point. When you are looking at your, um, you can do it here on the screen in this custom display. So like pool on property, we could change and customize this label to just say pool so it doesn't take up as much space and as many characters. Um, let's see, view. And if I want to put view at the end before the icons, I'm going to do put that after acres. So I'm going to add. Okay, but see how you can just put in whatever information that you're, you are interested in. Um, view, pool on property, I'll do master on main as the last one. So master main, we'll add that. And again, I could do just master DN for master down. And I'm gonna hit save. And Nicole's custom 2020 is gonna be my new layout. Let me show you how that works. We're, we're gonna get out of custom display and to get to custom display, we went to my matrix settings and then custom display. All right, is there a way to combine multifamily and residential other than starting in cross property? Cross property is the only way that I know to do multifamily and residential. Um, cross property would be the only way I know to do both at the same time. All right. We are gonna go back to 
do a search. I'll do active active contingent RRW. Y'all are going to learn speed bar without even knowing you learned speed bar. All right. When I do a search, it obviously defaults to the single line, but now I can come in and change it to my custom display, which then means it's going to add the columns that I created in my custom display and delete the ones I didn't want that I removed in my custom display. So now you can see I've got view, I've got master down, and then I have the ability to go in and click on those column headers and sort by either one of those new columns. And when I scroll over to the end, I took out some of those icons. The RPR icon is gone from the back end. Okay. I have a question. Can you add neighborhood? Yes, absolutely. Well, subdivision for, um, I think that, uh, matrix calls it subdivision either subdivision or neighborhood but yes you can add that as a column as well is there a way to make a custom page display um tell me what you're asking there chet is there a way to make a custom page display like for the agent one page yes can you customize that you used to be able to do it in designer tool way back when and yeah. it was phenomenal it was so nice because i could tweak it and make it look have all the good information I wanted right up top. Yeah. It's really pretty. Uh -huh. uh, they took that away. I didn't know if they've added it back at some point. Um, it doesn't look like it. I have not, this is the first time I've looked at it. It doesn't have that tool where you can do the save as agent one page. So, and I don't, gotcha. there's not a designing tool in this, in matrix, like we had in our old MLS. So it doesn't look like it. I didn't think so. I was hoping though. Yeah. You never know, they do, I mean, they make changes. So uh -huh. I would certainly put in a request for it. Okay, now that we have had, um, we've made the change and have our custom display, we can still modify this further. If we went back into my matrix, we can edit this report again and add more columns, remove more columns and do whatever we want and then still do sorting. We can move the columns around, drag and drop, do all of those things we did initially. Okay, custom display is very powerful because it allows you access to the, the info that you want on that very first search results screen. All right, that takes us through to speed bar and speed bar is the fastest way to search. Now, what I will tell you is that um, there are instructions for the speed bar. I did not give you the full packet of instructions but if you go up to the top, so this is the speed bar. It looks sort of like the Google search in matrix. It's the little window right here. If you go to this window and you click on the question mark, that's going to take you to a link for your speed bar reference guide. And when you click on the speed bar reference guide, you have got a seven page packet of all the shortcuts because speed bar is sort of the, the shorthand of matrix. And this tells you how to do the shorthand, that if you want to do open house, how do you abbreviate to search for an open house? Or how do you do a status or an address? Okay, I'm going to show you a couple of them. We're not going to go through the entire speed bar reference guide, but I'm going to show you a couple of my favorite ones. And then we will um, talk about how to utilize it. All right. Where did I get? Okay, so the speed bar reference guide right here at the top in the little search window, if you click on the question mark, and then when you get to this page, there's a link that says this is your document for the speed bar reference or the complete speed bar reference. When you click on that, it will take you to the seven page um, documentation with all the shortcuts. All right, let's go and do some speed bar searches. When I go into the speed bar, if I type A, AC, um, four plus, let's do three plus, four plus, uh, I changed my mind, four plus, three plus, um,
If you were to look at that, and if you can't read it, what it says is A space AC four plus three plus dollar sign 500 minus. You can probably figure what I'm asking from matrix without even knowing speed bar, that I'm asking for active, active contingent, four bed, three bath, and bedroom and bath has to go in that order, four plus bed, three plus bath, $500,000 $500, or below. And I didn't specify any MLS area, anything like that. And if I hit the magnifying glass, Matrix is going to run this search for me. I didn't have to use the search screen. I did it straight from the speed bar. And there are 1,359 properties that match that within our MLS. I'm also still listed on my custom display right now. And if I wanted to change it back to single line, I could. The order for your speed bar does not matter except for bedrooms and bath. So I can put active, active, contingent out here at the end of it. I don't have to put it at the very beginning. It's just habit for me to do it at the beginning. And for the price, I also wanna make sure that I only use one dollar sign. If I was gonna do 500 to 600, I would do dollar sign 500, matrix is trying to catch up. If I want to do 500 to 600, I would do dollar sign 500 dash 600. Only one dollar sign, not two. Okay. Bedrooms, then baths, and you put spaces. So because this is the speed bar, we are using spaces rather than when we were using the search, we did commas. Okay. Speed bar has spaces, search has commas. All right, let me show you a couple of other quick things. We can type in an MLS number. And that will go directly to the MLS number, whether that's active, current, anything like that. I can put in just a street name. Let's say if I put in Colona Vista, it's gonna pull up all properties that were in the MLS under Colona Vista. Again, because I did specify actives, pending, um, solds. If I wanted to, I could say solds, Colona Vista. So I could do an MLS number. I can do a street. Uh, I can do an agent name. If I put the shortcut for agent is AG, and then I put Smith. Matrix is going to say, do you want the agent whose first name is Smith or last name is Smith? Okay, AG space. And then a, a name will give you agent directory. And then I have access to all the agents with that name. That to me, I have a hard time finding the agent directory here in Matrix. This is a really easy way for you to look and find agent information. Um, agent Jones. Last name is Jones. Oh, goodness. Okay. So MLS number. Um, street or full street address. If you're going to do a street address, don't include Austin, don't include Westlake, just include the, you know, 1111 West Lane, okay? Um, the less information sometimes in the speed bar, the better, okay? One last time to get to the speed bar reference, you're going to click the question mark and you're going to click then on the document for the speed bar reference guide, okay, right here. That will give you all the shortcuts, but it is fairly intuitive with the way that you're used to using matrix for the searches that you would do um, in terms of, you know, doing active number of bath, number of bedrooms. Whoops. All right. Any questions, feel free to put them in the chat. If you have questions on speed bar and I'm going to flip back over to the slides. Matrix is fun. All right, now we're gonna talk about stats. We can run tabular stats and market analysis. Let me show you those. Many of y'all are probably familiar with the um, quick CMA. Quick CMA is a very, very cool report. Very cool, there I go again. Quick CMA is an, a very helpful report. And when you run a search, it will give you 
easy to understand data um, with median and average. But I want to show you another option to the quick CMA. I'm going to go do again just another search down at the bottom. We're scrolling and matrix and zoom are thinking. When you get down to the bottom where you would normally run quick CMA, I'm going to show you a couple of other options that you have. Now, what you'll see is that a lot of these features and buttons are grayed out. That's because I haven't selected any properties, but I do have the option to do stats. If I go into stats, tabular, and I didn't select any properties, I have 225 results and I am leaving it at that. Didn't select any of them. If I click on tabular, it's going to give me this market analysis report. This is very similar to the quick CMA, but it includes a listing for sold price versus list price ratio, which the quick CMA does not have. And in this case, the actives and round rack West, um, no, I'm sorry. Yeah. Sold. So this is sold from four, seven, um, from the January 8th to today, to April 7th. During that time frame in Round Rock West, the sold to list ratio was 100% and 100 over 100%, almost 101%, and sold price to original list price, which means before they made any price adjustments, dropped the price, was 104.51%, okay? That's some interesting data, again, that you don't get with the quick CMA. Let me show you that real quick. Again, down at the bottom, we clicked on stats and we went to tabular. We did not select any properties. Nothing is checked over here on the left. Come on, matrix. We clicked on stats and then we went to tabular and we got to the market analysis report. So if I can get back to that, I'm gonna show you one other thing. Or I may just start to sing Jeopardy music, whatever it takes. I amuse myself. I can't see your faces, so I don't know if it's amusing you, but just don't call me boring. Those of you that were on yesterday's call get that. All right, stats. And then I'm going to go to tabular, and that will take us to the market report. Thank you all for playing my reindeer games and giving me the ha ha's. I appreciate it. All right, stats, tabular. Imagine how my kids feel. <laughs> All right, so we're in the market analysis report, which has, again, the sold to list price ratios. But there's also a drop down that this gives you a way to look at the data in ways that you may not have realized were available to you. Um, something like number of bedrooms. If you are doing comps and you want to be able to have one place to compare a three bedroom versus the four bedroom that you're about to list and see what the price per square is, difference between those. Um, this is again RRW, average price per square um, is 172.54 on a three bedroom. Average price per square on a four bedroom is 153.67. Okay, so that's kind of interesting that you can see the difference in just what that one bedroom will make. I know I'm looking at average and I'm not even going to get into average versus median. I truly prefer median because it, it's more of a normal value. It doesn't take in the super high and the super low. Median's a better number um, mathematically, but most people are more comfortable with average. And then um, from a days on market, three bedroom, 23, four bedroom, 26. Okay, but that's kind of an interesting way to compare. And then here's a year built. Now RRW, this is gonna be all over the place. We've got stuff from 1945 going probably all the way to 2020. 
But if you have, if you were looking at one specific neighborhood and you wanted to be able to compare your four or five year old house to, to the new builds, this is a great way to do it in one snapshot. Um, this is Annabella. This is for RRW, but you could run it on a specific area. I just did MLS area of RRW, but we could run this on a neighborhood if we were doing comps. Okay, so you do have all of these other options under that market analysis to do city, zip code, um, county, bedrooms, price. All right, nice way to be able to look at one snapshot and see all of this data. That's kind of one of those hidden things. I did get two, Kevin, so I'm with you on that. All right, back to stats. Let's talk about this stats button, okay? When I go to the third tab, that stats. And stats is as easy to use as a search, but it provides amazing depth of information to really make you a subject matter expert in whatever zip code, neighborhood, or MLS area you want. And additionally, you can take this stuff, screenshot it, and post it to social media or put it in listing presentations. So if you're not using stats, this might blow your mind. I'm gonna go residential stats. And the trick with stats is not to use what is listed when you get into the stats button. You're not gonna to go to the presets. We're gonna to go to the second tab, which is customize, okay? I'm gonna click on customize because I'm gonna have far more range of features and flexibility. When I go to customize, and again, I can do a neighborhood, um, an area, school district, zip code, just like I could do on a search. I can add additional fields just like in a regular search. But let's say we want to do, let's just, we're gonna just do the whole MLS. Let's look at the last three years and we are going to do list price median. Now, right now I have one statistic, here's the trick. If you click on advanced options, it added a second statistic. So now I can do list price and I'm gonna do sales price, also median. I'm gonna do list price median, sales price median. I don't wanna do average on one and median on the other. And we're gonna group by, first I'll show you by year. So I've only chosen time frame, the statistics and how to group it, that's it. We're running the whole MLS. When I hit generate, I'm gonna get a chart of data that's going to show me year over year list price versus sales price right did things sell where they were listed in 2020 guess what there's a bigger gap okay what if this isn't easy enough for me to read no fear over here on the right we're looking at the chart there's a tab that says data when i click on that I can see the numbers, right? So I don't have to look at the chart itself. It gives me the actual data. Can I make this specific stat search as a, oh, as a speed search? I don't know that you could create stats as a speed bar, as a saved speed bar search. I haven't tried that. I love Janet just had a wow moment. I love the wow moments. I live for the wow. <laughs> All right, let me show you this with a different twist. So let's go back. We're still going three years, but rather than sorting it by year, what if I sort by, um, we will, um, if you will reach out to your sales rep, you can get a copy of the recording and also the slides are available for y'all too. So yes, absolutely. If you want a copy of this, please feel free to reach out to your sales rep and we'll make sure you get a copy. Area, let's do the top 30 areas. Ready? It's thinking, it's about to blow your mind. Hold on to your head. Woo, look at that. List price versus sales price by area. Then let's go to data. Survey says, wow. Okay, so this is something that you could take and export. I'm too lazy to actually hit the export button. I just copy this. It does have export to CSV, but I just highlight it, hit copy, and then minimize this. I could go and open Excel and paste it into Excel. 
do, do, do. And then I can do whatever I want and create my own charts. So I can paste the data here into Excel, or I could even just screen clip, let's say maybe not with area, let's do, let me show you one other way. Let's do, oh, let me show you by price because price is a price range. This is rather interesting. And we're almost done guys, we're, we are about to wrap up that this shows you by price range. So zero to 50, 50 to 75, and these are by the thousands. Um, so this is, you know, 75,000 to 100,000, what the, the median is in that range, in that price range. And you can either copy that stuff like I showed you and put it in Excel, or we can take this and do like a screen clip and, Put that in listing presentation or save it somewhere in email or text it okay stats super fun lots of features lots of data that you can go through there and i know that we've got people that are jumping off so we're going to wrap up if you have questions on stats feel free to pop those into chat and i'm just going to confirm we went through all of this stuff and give you the slide info again is bit dot ly forward slash tnt matrix all lowercase thank y'all so much for joining us today hopefully you got some good useful info out of this um, reach out to your tnt sales rep if you want a copy of either the slides or the recording from this and we're happy to send that out to you and we look forward to seeing you we've got classes at 11 o'clock monday tuesday wednesday here on zoom so reach out to your sales rep to get the links for that thanks y'all Bye.